Today I'd like to give you the rundown on how exactly card series, or pools as the community frequently calls them, work in Marvel Snap, which cards are found where, and when you can expect to get particular cards in your collections in these groupings. Let's go ahead and dive into it. There are five different series of cards. What this means is every card in Marvel Snap is assigned to one of these groups and you collect these cards at random inside of these groups as you gain progress. The first three of these series are based on your level on the collection track. So for example, you're guaranteed to have every card contained in series one by the time you hit collection level 214. Subsequently, you're guaranteed to have every card in series two by the time you finish collection level 474. Now, the thing that can trip people up with card series in regards to three, four, and five is that unlike series one, two, and three, which are sequential, meaning you finish all of series one before you start two, and you finish all of series two before you start series three, series four and five are cards that you obtain concurrently while you're still collecting series three cards. Series four and five are part of Marvel Snap's weekly card release mechanic with new cards that don't start in the season pass because beginning in series five and then slowly downgrading to four and then eventually three over time becoming less expensive and less difficult to obtain for players the longer they have existed inside of Marvel Snap. Well, as of recording this video, we don't know exactly what the sizes of series four and five are going to ultimately be. We do know via communication from Second Dinner that eventually they wanted a one in, one out point where whenever a new card gets added to series five, something gets bumped down to four and something from four gets bumped down to three. This means in the long term, series three is the only group of cards in Marvel Snap that's going to kind of grow endlessly as a steady new stream of cards is released. Series one and two remain static with their current card listings, while series four and five will rotate which cards are contained within them, but will eventually remain the same size each of them are. A question that always gets asked after I explain what I already have here on stream is, Jeff, why don't cards eventually downgrade into series one and two, like four and five are eventually downgrading into three? The reason for this is series one and two exist for a different reason than series four and five. Series four and five are the new card release mechanism, as I just explained, while series one and two are an important part about the Marvel Step onboarding process. Let's take a look at what I mean by that. To start with, many of the cards that you begin Marvel Snap with right off the bat are very straightforward, such as the Hulk, who doesn't do anything other than smash. There's no rules text on Hulk. It is an abilityless card that provides 12 points of stats for six energy. A number of the cards in series one are cards like this that help you understand the basics of just playing to the Marvel Snap board as well as the energy system that Marvel Snap has. Now, some cards in Series 1 do have abilities, and the cards with abilities in Series 1 often serve to help the player begin to learn how synergies between cards in deck building work in this game, such as White Tiger plus Odin. This is a card combination players get added to their collection very early on. That is a very straightforward, oh, I have this 5 energy on reveal card with a good effect, and then I can play Odin as a 6 energy card that re-triggers this on reveal effect kind of teaching players the beginnings of basic deck building and learning how cards in their collection can work together to great effect. Once players have a grasp on Marvel Snap's fundamental through the onboarding of Series 1, Series 2 is an important next step to getting you to a full Marvel Snap experience. Specifically, Series 2 is loaded up with important cards like these that are key answers to essentially everything you could play against in the full Marvel Snap card collection on the ladder. Shang-Chi, Killmonger, Storm, these are powerful disruptive effects that I still regularly play with almost every day in Marvel Snap with my almost entirely complete collection. Series 3 cards past this are not only just everything else, but they also tend to be cards that require more specific tools to fully leverage. A great example of this is one of my favorite cards in Cerebro. This is a card that, one, 
typically needs Mystique to be leveraged to its full capability, but it also generally needs a lot of key cards such as Brood if you're playing Cerebro 2, or Luke Cage plus Hazmat if you're looking to play Cerebro 1, where if you gave players a card like this early in Series 1 or Series 2, they really wouldn't be able to leverage it and it wouldn't be of much use to them. While early Series 3 collections are going to be kind of piecemeal and which cards you can get that you can or can't use right away, it's better that players wait to start getting these slightly less generically useful cards later on once they have all of those key counters in their deck that Series 1 and 2 provide. One final tidbit of wisdom regarding the Marvel Snap card series that's important to understand is that card series are explicitly not broken down by power level. My big green friend here from Series 1, one of the first cards you get in Marvel Snap, this card sees play in decks that I still play today that I feel are optimal inside of the entire Marvel Snap card pool. Like I mentioned a minute ago, these Series 2 answers are some of the generically best cards in Marvel Snap because of how flexible and key counter cards they can be into many things that you're going to run into. The series of cards in Marvel Snap are broken down by complexity and utility, not power level. Series 4 and Series 5 cards are newer cards. They're not strictly better cards. In fact, a lot of the cards in Series 4 and 5, if you look at them, they're a lot like Cerebro. They're niche and require specific extra cards to work with, and they can certainly be competitive, but they're not overbearing and you don't need them to be winning your games of Marvel Snap. I know plenty of players who have climbed all the way through Infinite playing into players with full collections using only Series 1 and Series 2 cards. If you're looking for deck recommendations for that, I'm going to link a playlist in the video description down below where I cover a bunch of lists like that. As always, I'd just like to say thank you to the folks who made it all the way here to the end of the video. If you enjoyed my insights, be sure to tap that like button. If you have any questions on anything I didn't cover or something that needs clarity, feel free to drop that in a comment down below, and I'll do my best to respond when time permits. And if you're someone that's new to the channel and you made it all the way to the end here, consider subscribing. I post Marvel Snap tidbits like this, as well as game news updates and deck highlights here seven days a week. I'd love to see you back again in the future sometime soon. Enjoy the rest of your day, folks.